Right guys, hello, this is a recap on a video I've already done, but we're gonna do some bonus content at the end. So do with the Elgato Stream Deck software and this keyboard to help people out. So those of you that own it, you are probably already aware the K55 RGB gaming keyboard from Corsair is not officially compatible with the lighting link feature of their IQ software. It used to be, they did an update that took the feature away. They said it's not compatible anymore. And that upset a lot of people. They like that feature. If you don't know what it is, it means your Corsair RGB keyboard. If you've got a Corsair RGB mouse, maybe you've got some Corsair RGB memory, RAM, maybe you've got one of their uh, RGB all-in-one water coolers that has lights. All of these lights can be synced together to do the same lighting effect. It looks lovely. It's a very cool feature. And when that was taken away, it annoyed a lot of people. Um, understandable because the K55 at 50, £55 pound is hardly a cheap keyboard in the first place, although there are more expensive versions of it. Okay, so whenever it was five, six months ago, I put up a video explaining there is a workaround uh, to get some of that functionality back. It's not perfect. There are things you have to be aware of, um, but you can see it's got nearly 200 likes. Plenty of people thank me because they got some of the functionality back. Some people struggle with it. They said it didn't work. Many, many, many of them I know did not follow the video properly. They did not listen to what I said. If you don't listen, I can't help you. How do I know people didn't listen? Well, many of them went, well, it doesn't work. I spoke to Corsair and they say it's not officially compatible. I told everybody that in the first 20 seconds of the video. Uh, I explained there is a workaround and there's some hoops you've got to jump through, but overall, I was quite happy with um, what we got out of it. So in this video, I'll do some links in the description. I'll do timestamps. Those of you here to do the Elgato Stream Deck stuff, you can jump straight ahead to that. We'll do uh, a link to the original video. Those of you that want to watch that out of curiosity when I walk through it. Uh, we'll do a link to the old version of IQ. We need this to do the workaround. It's a mega link just so you can download the software. from. It's Corsair's own. I have not modified it in any way. I've not hacked it, whatever you want to call it. It is Corsair's software when the K55 used to work. We used the old version. We forced the keyboard into the light and link profile. And then we update and it stays in there. It's forced in there. And um, yeah, happy days. But don't skip ahead thinking you know because there are other things you need to be aware of. Uh, we'll also put a link in for the Elgato Stream Deck software. Those of you who want to do that to help you out. Okay, so the first thing I need to do, talking about the workaround, is I didn't make this clear enough apparently in the last video. You need to own more than just the K55 keyboard. You need another Corsair device with RGB that's recognized by IQ to change the lighting link profile for the workaround. Uh, if we try to do it through the keyboard when we've updated, the software will crash. I will show this later and explain it. It's just how it is, a minor annoyance we have to live with. I had some people say that the K55 does not show up in the IQ software. I don't know why they put that as a comment. They could have just as easily typed that into Google, done a search, the first result, take them to the Corsair forums. There are a number of things to try to resolve that problem, to reset the keyboard. Uh, this video is not about troubleshooting IQ. It is a, a workaround for the lighting link, and it is about the Elgato Stream Deck software. Other people had said that uh, their mouse wasn't showing up, their memory wasn't showing up, whatever the device was, only to find out they had stayed on the old version and I told them to update and they did not do that. When you update, you will get access to even more lighting link profile, more effects, more devices become compatible. So it's important that you do update the software. Some people asked, can I just set the WSA and D keys to different colors? You can't do that on the K55. It only has three sections of the keyboard you can change the lights on. If you want to be able to do per key lighting, you need a more expensive keyboard. Okay. Uh, some people had asked about the Asus motherboards. Uh, those that have RGB lights on them, some of those do have uh, integration with IQ now. They want to know if that works. Well, I can't test it because I don't have one of those motherboards. Um, but I imagine if you follow the steps, how they're supposed to be done, I'm going to say you've got a 90% chance of it working. I don't see why not. Uh, but hopefully someone can confirm or um, yeah, say it doesn't work in the comments below. Okay, so let's go into settings. Just so you can see, I have software version 3.31.81. This is the latest version as of recording the video. 
I have updated IQ many, many times over the last five months since doing the workaround video. And the K55 with each update has stayed in the lighting link. I use it on a day-to-day -day basis. I know it works. When people tell me it doesn't work, I know they haven't followed the steps correctly. They've done something wrong. So hopefully you all had the keyboard, you all have another device, and you've got the latest version of the software. Your devices show across the top of the banner, and I would suggest you update the firmware for each of your devices. That's just good practice. Well, you know everything's up to date. You're going to uninstall IQ completely. How you do this is up to you. Go into the Start menu, do Settings, Apps, uninstall it that way, uh, or find Corsair Utility Engine. There's IQ, I'll right click and do Uninstall. Uh, whatever way you want to do it, but it will bring up the Uninstall Wizard. And it's given us this little tick box that says delete save settings for all users. You must do this. You must do it. People were saying, I've installed the old version. It won't open. Lo and behold, they hadn't followed what they were told to do, which was to tick that tick box. So make sure that's ticked. Go through the rest of the wizard, uninstall the software, and then you can install the old version, which I've given you a link to in the description below. So. I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to stay on the latest version where I've already applied the workaround. Uh, you're welcome to watch the old video that I did where I go through it step by step by step. Um, but you guys aren't idiots. I can explain it to you uh, simply enough. So you are currently on the old version. You will click on your keyboard. You will go into lighting effects and put the K55 into, you have lighting link options, so pick one. If you want to do type lighting, that means when you press a key, the lights come on, set that now. The keyboard will not sync to it once we do the update. I don't know why, it's just another little annoyance. I don't personally use that preset. Uh, but all that matters is that the K55 is put into a lighting link profile. You can then go into settings, check for update. It will update to the latest version. And uh, we can then go and make changes through another device. So the reason I can't click on lighting effects is it will crash the software uh, with the workaround when we've done the update. So I need to do it for another device. So I'm gonna click on my mouse, go on lighting effects. So we've got this little drop down menu, so predefined custom. Now I want the mouse to be in the lighted link as well. So if I click visor, you can see the keyboard, lo and behold, is working with the lighting link. It's doing its job, it's synced up with the mouse, they're both blinking away trying to give me an epileptic fit. I can do spiral rainbow. I can go through these effects. As far as I know, most of them do what they're supposed to do other than trying to get into the type lighting. You must set that, as I said, on the previous version. So I like to do temperature. This is one of the new presets when you've done the update. I set it to what uh, my CPU temperature is. You could do it off your graphics card or many other sensors off the motherboard. But I find this a really useful feature. Uh, so I can set temperature, lowest one is white, middle one, I'm going to do that as orange. I'm going to change it up because I've got a Thrustmaster Hotas, a joystick and a throttle, has orange lights on it, so everything will sync up. That's what I like to do, and that's going to work with the keyboard and the mouse. And if I have memory or anything else, as long as they're all put into the lighting link, happy days. Um, hopefully you've got that functionality. Okay, so um, yeah, the other thing we want to talk about well, we'll just show I'm on lighting effects for the mouse. Now, if I click on keyboard, that's automatically gone to the lighting effects for keyboard. And lo and behold, the software is going to crash. We know it's going to do that. So just don't panic. Just be aware it happens and just be careful not to click on the lighting effects for the keyboard. I'll just load up IQ again. So there we go. So if I was on the mouse, all I needed to do was just do the performance or DPI tab. Now, when I click on uh, the keyboard we don't we don't crash but people wanted to know about the performance tab they wondered if we still had that functionality when we do the workaround yes we do so just to talk it through uh, we've got this win lock key it's a little padlock when you press that an led light comes on to say that feature is enabled in this performance part it says if win lock is on uh, you can disable the windows key disable alt and tab you can have one of them all of them none of them it's up to you uh, but why would you want to disable the windows key well, let's say I'm playing Battlefield 5. If I hold down Alt, that enables the mic on my webcam. And when I'm speaking, my squad can hear me and I can say, you know, revive me, there's a tank by the bridge, um, you know, blow that building up, there's guys inside it, whatever. Uh, the control key 
that would be crouch or lie down, whatever you bound it to in the game. But between those two keys is the Windows key. And if I accidentally press that in the game, it can take me out of the game and get me killed, which is a bad thing. So we can push that padlock, lock that key off, so that never happens to us in game. Just so you're aware, we've still got that functionality with a workaround, it's not a problem. We're now gonna talk about the macro keys. So it's telling me there's Elgato Stream Deck software compatibility. We'll get onto that in a little bit. Uh, what I wanna do is just talk about doing macro keys in the IQ software itself. So they're not bound by default. We add in what we want them to do. They, they do nothing at the moment until I tell it what I want it to do. So I'll click the plus. Uh, it's given me macro one that's highlighted in yellow. So I'm gonna have that as the G1 key. So we just talked about Battlefield. If you play Battlefield 5 after a match, you might notice that the chat window comes up and people say, GG, good game. They can't be bothered to say good game. I wouldn't be bothered to type that out either. But that is still taking them four keystrokes. I had to press J to bring up chat to all. Then I did G, G, enter, four keystrokes. If we do that a lot, we can actually compress that down to just a single key, our macro G1 key. So how are we going to do that? We'll click the record button to record a macro. So I'll press J, that will bring up the chat, and I'll do good, space, game, space, guys, enter, and stop recording. And that has saved all of those keys, and that will just happen when I press G1. It's kind of useful. You don't have to um, do that exact example, but it, it, it's just uh, to give you an idea. Another thing I could do, uh, let's just make sure I've got win lock off so the Windows key works. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller so I know I can get to the record. So I'm going to press the Windows key once and then stop recording. So that's now working as the Windows key, G1. So I'm going to turn on the win lock, hammer away at the start button. It's not doing anything, but G1 does. Now G1 is next to escape. I'm less likely to press that. It's keeping, I've kept the start button. Um, without it being an annoyance in games, if you want to do that. Uh, so another example, there's uh, flight sims and driving sims. So DCS World has a flight sim. The controls in that can be pretty hardcore. Uh, you have to do kinds of hand gymnastics. So hold control, hold shift, hold I, hold all three together, and that might pop the canopy off the jet, you know, eject it. Uh, probably not gonna use that function a lot in a game, but if there are multiple keys that need to be pressed, might be far easier to just do that as the G1 key. We can record it, you know, so record, hold control, I'm holding shift and I press I, and that's all of them, you know, together. So if that's what you want to do, um, you can play around with this. It's uh, it's quite a, lot of, quite a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. I'll just leave that blank because we're now going to move on to the Elgato the Stream Deck software. So if you don't know what it is, we can just talk it through quickly on the Elgato website. So Stream Decks are like button boxes and they have their software, the Stream Deck software, which can be incorporated into IQ to control those macro buttons, G1 to G6. Uh, so they're a little bit more than button boxes, to be fair, the Stream Decks. Uh, each button has its own LCD display. So not only can we customize what each button does, we can customize what each button looks like as well to give us a visual clue, which is very useful. They're very popular with streamers that are on YouTube and Twitch to start and stop recordings and all these kind of functions they want to do. But it's also useful for games. We've mentioned flight sims and driving sims. Some of these guys go really hardcore. They build their own button box. They want uh, switches they can flip and buttons they can push and they solder that all up. But not everybody's got the skill set to do that or the tools to do that. But anyone can get their wallet out and order up a stream deck. So we'll just talk through um, yeah, well, my opinion, we have the Stream Deck Mini, which gives us six buttons. That's £80 give or take. We understand why it costs what it costs because we can set, you know, tell it what, it what you want it to do and make it look like what you want them to do. Uh, but I do have G1 to G6 on my Corsair keyboard. Now, I can't change what the keys look like, but I'll know what they do because I'm the one that set them up. So if I didn't have the Corsair keyboard, I would lean to buying one of those over a Stream Deck Mini. Uh, once I've got the keyboard, and I can actually see the appeal of the Stream Deck, I might wanna get the Stream Deck, which is a little bit more money, or if I want even more buttons, go for the Stream Deck XL. So when I'm doing uh, my flight sim, DCS, 
Uh, they have multi-function displays, so you have buttons 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and enter to put in coordinates. Um, yeah, we can have all of those on the Stream Deck. If I do the Stream Deck Excel, I've got even more buttons. So not only can I do a keypad, I can have a button for my landing gear, show a wheel, so I know what it is, and do my flaps, have an eject button. If you're doing space sims, you can have a button to raise your shields, go through your, your weapon presets, whatever you want to do. Your imagination really is the only limitation. Uh, so cool, cool bits of kit, but not everybody's necessarily going to buy it. And as we've got the keyboard, we might as well show how it's integrated into IQ. So we need to go into settings and just make sure we've got enable SDK ticked and enabled. Some of you might have turned that off. There's games like uh, Metro Exodus that took control of your keyboard. They changed the lights to what the game was doing and you didn't like that. So you disabled the SDK, but we, we must have it enabled for the Stream Deck software to work. So I've put a link in the description for you to download it and install it. So the requirements are, you must have IQ. We've updated that because of the Lighting Link workaround. Uh, it must be open and you must enable the SDK in the settings. We've done that. We've installed Stream Deck and we've got it open. So we meet the requirements. Uh, some of you might be saying, Hono, I don't see what you see. It's open, but I can't see any way to configure the keys. It might not have detected your keyboard. Just close down Stream Deck, open it again, and you should see something similar to what I've got on screen in a moment. Although yours, G1 to G6, all of them will be blank. I've done a few examples, and we're just going to talk through what we do. So we did the macro keys in IQ, but with the Stream Deck software, it's even simpler because we just choose the feature that we want to do to the right, and we drag it across. So. Uh, OBS Studio, we've got record, I'll just click, hold, drag to G6, I'm going to put that there. Uh, when I push G6, it starts the recording, when I press it again, it stops recording in OBS. I'm not going to do that now, because it will stop the recording. Uh, we've got mixer audio, so I click and hold, put that to G5, let, let that go, drop that in there. So why have I done that? Well, let's say we've already reached October, Star Wars Squadrons has come out, I want to do some VR footage of the game, uh, do some commentary, but this Star Wars music, and as soon as YouTube hears Star Wars music, guarantee copyright claim. So I've heard it in game, I can just quickly press G5. It's still gonna record the gameplay, you'll still hear me speaking, but it, you won't hear the game music. And once I know that that's stopped, I can tap G5 again and the game audio comes back. So that's kind of useful in a sneaky way to get around those copyright claims. Uh, G2 to G4, I've used for shadow play. So to get extra features, I've got more actions, it says most popular, so we can start installing um, these extra add-ons. So there's one for Corsair there. Uh, I did the one for Shadow Play. That's part of the GeForce experience. We've got an NVIDIA graphics card. It's got its own um, recording software. So I've installed that for the for the example. But there's it's loads for you to play around with and have fun with. We'll just keep it simple for the sake of the video. So I'm going to scroll down till we see Shadow Play. So there we go, so overlay settings, I drag that to G2 and let go. So when I tap G2, it brings up the overlay. It's, it lets me do the settings and little bits and pieces. The normal shortcut for this is Alt and Z, which is just not as convenient as me tapping G2. Uh, G3 I've done as the mic toggle, just dragged it across, dropped it. Pretty obviously turns the mic on and off in the shadow play recordings kind of useful to have and G4 I've done as manual recording toggle for shadow play so again G4 just tap it to start and stop recording plenty of stuff you can play around with I've left G1 blank just in case I do want to use it as the Windows key an example we showed with the macro keys earlier but you can tinker around do whatever you want whatever really suits you again we can't change what the keyboard keys look like unless you want to put a sticker over them but I know what they do because I've set it up and I can configure them around. If we really, really like it, um, you can use your phone with the Stream Deck software, or you can you know, pony up the cash and buy yourself a proper Stream Deck and have extra functionality. So now you guys know, we'll leave it there. Have a great day, have a great evening, whatever you choose to do after watching this, and I'll see you all when I see you next. Ciao for now. G6.